Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT and in this video we're looking at another module and this one is Gatherer. So you can see my mod list there. I've got nothing else installed apart from Gatherer. Yes, I've got the player's handbook installed but that's because I was getting stuff from the SRD and from the player's handbook. You don't need that at all. Yes, I'm in version 12 of Foundry. Uh, yes, I am in my alternate install which is the, uh, the 4.0 od and game engine but that's not relevant to this video this mod is agnostic so you can use it um, for any game engine game system within foundry um, and if you are using dnd the 3.3.1 which a lot of people are still on because of the automations it works in there i just happen to be doing it in this world just because you know <laughs> Just to break things up a bit really um, and i was doing something else in here so it's gather a mod so this is another ripper one so in the last video we looked at Master Crafter where we can take all sorts of components and we can make things whether it's potions, it's tools, equipment, armor um, by putting things together. But what are those things? Well the Gatherer module provides us a way of um, not automating quite but being able to more effectively do things like hunting, gathering those supplies etc. So that's what we're looking at. So First of all, there's two kind of main functions we're going to look at in this. Um, and we're going to start off by looking at the uh, the hunter-gatherer part of it. So if I open my journal here, I've got a journal called Gatherer. Now I'm going to go through in a while and show you how to set this up. Um, but I've got this journal here. It's ready to go. I just put my, uh, my chat on over on the right-hand side. So Sorryman here is going to do some gathering. Well, actually, he's going to do some hunting. Um, where he is, he's going to be using this hunting table. Now, bearing in mind that you can have different hunting spots and grounds for different locations, time of the day, whatever you want to do. Again, we'll go over that when I set it up for you and show you how to do it. But all we're going to do here is Sorryman can um, click on his gather tag here. It's going to ask him to make his uh, survival skill check. He's going to roll that dice. And yes, he got a 20. Fantastic. And he has one... Well, he's harvested one pig. So if I open his inventory, he's going to have loads of stuff in there from when I was testing it. Um, he's, got, uh, he's now got six lots of pig. He's got seven ox four goats, three cows, and a chicken. <laughs> uh, let's let's reduce all these down so you can see those numbers going up as we do this. If I can manage to actually use my fingers correctly. So those are the kind of things that he can pick up from this, uh, represented by these icons. So yeah, we've got a chicken, um, we've got cow, we've got goat, sheep, pig, uh, and ox. So every time he clicks on this, it's going to ask him to make a survival check. He's going to make that, and then if he passes that survival check, he's going to have... Um, he's now just got two cow. So he's now gathered two cow. Now, it doesn't have to be cow. It can be anything you like. You can set these items. You can rename them. You can create your own items, whatever you want to do. But very nice, and it dumps it in his inventory. So if we look at cow, he's now got two lots of cow. It's you know, added the weight on and everything else. Now, yeah, okay, I've actually said cow, so <laughs> they weigh quite a lot. He's, he's walking around with two whole cows, one over each shoulder. Um, possibly sorry, Monk could get away with doing that. Maybe one cow, but not anything else. So how does this actually kind of work? So uh, this is just a journal page, as you can see. Uh, and I've got this called Hunting, and I can edit this journal page. Now, when I edit this, um, you can see that it's using a rollable table. Okay, so it's going to use a rollable table I've called Hunting. I already set one up. If I go to my rollable tables, top right, you can see I've got one called Hunting. And if I open this rollable table, this is where I'm choosing what things might be found when we are, um, when you know, when we're actually hunting and stuff. And I can change this just like any rollable table that I want to. I can drag stuff from the SRD um, or from my items tag, whatever I want to do. I can rename them if I want to, whatever I want to do here. But I might say, for example. Um, I want a uh, cow to be between 1 and 2 uh, and I'm going to say that chickens are between 7 and 10. So I've got a much higher chance of getting chicken than I have pig. 
Okay, so if I update that, you can see the table's reshuffled itself. Cow is now a one to two, a roll of three. Um, obviously, my roll table formula is uh, should be D10 because <laughs> I've got 10 possible things. And if I just click roll on that, it's just going to roll in in the chat. It said chicken. It said goat. So that that's roll table. That's all that's doing. So this journal entry... Um, we're choosing which table we want for this. So uh, I might call this hunting outside cave or something. So I know exactly what this hunting spot is. Now, I probably wouldn't be that precise. I might have uh, hunting woodlands, hunting deep woods, might have hunting plains, hunting grasslands, hunting farmland, whatever I want to have for my different areas of hunting. And that's the table we're going to roll on. Um, now, we've got a time in here. Now, this time, you can use simple calendar for this as well. I haven't because I want to keep it neat and tidy and just talk about this module. But if you have simple calendar on, this hunting spot can reset after a certain amount of time. So as you forward time through using simple calendar, after that time has elapsed, it will reset this hunting spot and say, hey, all the creatures have come back now. You can hunt here again. Um, and this time is in hours, I believe. Should be in hours. That makes sense, doesn't it? Just double checking. Uh, da, da, da. Yeah, so it's a time in hours before it will reset. Uh, under that we've got pulls. So this is the amount of times you can hunt in this location before you run out of stuff. Okay. Now I'm, I'm saying hunting because mine's a hunting table but it works for gathering. If I was looking for herbs I might have a herb roll table. Um, I would pick the herb roll table and I might say well actually yeah you can pick from here 15 times because you know there's lots of plants they're not going to run away when they get disturbed but it might take a lot longer for you know at least 24 hours before other plants are ready to be harvested or something like that so i hope that makes sense you get what i mean so when we are here how many when we do successfully hunt something or pick something how many items are we going to get now you can do you know d4 plus three which might make sense for herbs. You might say, well, for hunting, it's going to be one item. You are going to hunt one deer or one chicken or something like that. But you can put these 1d4 type of die rolls in. I'm leaving that in there for the sake of this. You can define for this hunting spot what tool is needed. So I've said you need a spear. We're hunting animals here. We're hunting well, the pigs, goats, cows and stuff. I've said spear here. Um, you can semicolon and say bow um, or longbow or whatever it might be. Any piece of equipment, any item that you want. And of course you can create your own items. So if you were creating a fishing spot you might want to say requires a fishing spear or a fishing net. Um, and if they're not in the ISRD, just create your item call, uh, called that. And then you can make that a prerequisite. So I've got a spear here. Um, come back to mini game in a moment. Um, but we can also put a macro expression in here. Now this is useful. If you're not using the D&D game engine, you can put a mini macro in here to force it to do some kind of role um, that it needs to pass before you can successfully roll on the table. Okay. Now for the D&D game engine, that's built in, which is why we've got this box, these boxes here. So if you're not using the D&D game engine, you won't see this check bit at the bottom. Okay, but for the D&D game engine, this is here for us. So I can choose and say, well, actually, I'm, it's a survival check. I've made it a DC 10 for this spot. If I wanted, I could say, well, you, you need to use particular um, a tool and a DC for that. So a tool check, lockpicks, for example, is a tool check. Not that you're going to be hunting with lockpicks. You can have both. You can have either, whichever works for you. Um, we've already, I've already got spear as a prerequisite, so I haven't got a tool use in there for this purpose. So that's how you set that up. Um, and you're just pulling from that table, of course. So whenever time I click this, it's going to ask for that role. 
he's going to make the roll if he's successful. I just do it and see if I can get a disadvantage. See if I can get him to fail a roll. There we go. It comes up and says you did not gather any resources from this spot. Okay, we'll just gather once more. Um, and now when I try to do it, the gathering spot is exhausted and cannot be used again until it's reset. So you can see on the journal thing here, it's telling me in red that remaining pulls, so the amount of times I can try to hunt in this area, is now zero. So it won't let you do it. It, it just blocks you until it's reset. So I can reset it manually as the DM, of course, by clicking reset. It's gone back up to five here. Um, or if I was using simple calendar, once that time has elapsed, it would automatically reset. Now, obviously, I'm not in a you know, this scene doesn't make sense for this purpose. It's much more likely you would have those spots on a world map or something like that. But indeed, if the party say, oh, we're going to camp here, um, somebody go do some hunting, this is really nice way to kind of show how successful they are, depending where they choose to camp, where they choose to hunt. So, um, yeah, it's a nice little addition, isn't it? So before I move off of this function, uh, let me show you something else in here because there was one of the options we didn't look at is this mini game. So you can turn this on simply by putting a number in here. Now that number is the speed of which the mini game goes. I'm going to put in a thousand. It's in milliseconds. I'm going to put in a thousand. I'm going to save that because it's just easier to show you. So now when Sorryman tries to gather in this spot, he's got to make his roll still. Uh, failed, of course. Yes, excellent. <laughs> Here we go. Here's the minigame. So you can see the pictures are going through, and at some point, Sorryman gets to click it, and that's what he gets. So he got two goats, or two goat meat, or whatever. Obviously, mine just says goat. Um, I would change this properly to be goat meat um, instead of, you know, just the whole goat. Um, and of course he might get other items from that as well you know it might be that he gets rats rabbits etc all sorts of things but that mini game just gives another way um, just for the players you know get to click when they want uh, and they can try to get the thing that they want I managed to get goats again we have got four this time so use it don't use it but it can just make that you know oh we're gonna camp right somebody roll a survival check oh i rolled that okay uh you find um uh, you find a badger right okay you've got a badger it just adds a little bit more flavor to it which is really quite nice and that little mini game just to something little extra that you can put in there and of course because it's based on roll tables you can make that roll table as long as you like um, and you can make as many roll tables as you want for different areas. Just like random encounter tables, you're having a random hunting table. So this location here, um, we well, we're kind of we've got some caves and things. It's it's got some trees that have been chopped down, but we're kind of in the woods. We've got some water, so we might add into that kind of roll table things like um, yeah, there could be badger, could be there. Rabbits is probably going to be quite popular we may well have deer here um we're gonna have some rodents um things like voles i mean you know not a lot of meat on a vole um but we're all gonna have like rats um you might put weasels on there whatever's going to be relevant to your place now obviously if this was in the high in the mountains and it was snowy you might massively reduce that down to you know things like arctic hare um um rabbits uh, you may have snow foxes and things like that. So it's thematically, it kind of matches with it, which is, yeah, that's great. So, yeah, really nice, really cool. Now, just uh, one other thing to show you. If I, uh, if I, because Sorryman does have a spear. If I take his spear out, let's get rid of that. Remember we said that he has to have a spear to be able to do this. Now, if he tries to gather from here, it says you do not meet the requirements to gather here. Missing a spear. So it will check to make sure that that player has that prerequisite item before they do that. Okay, cool. Now the other function that I wanted to show you, I'm gonna clear that chat, is you can use this to loot monsters. Yeah. So if Sorryman comes down here and selects this monster, uh, he can do a Shift G and it will attempt to uh, gather from this monster now because I'm using the same background thing you may see the error message came up 
and said he hasn't got a spear. He's like, you haven't got a spear, mate. <laughs> you can't do it. Um, that's easy. That's I can just going to edit um, edit my uh, my thing here and take that spear out because I'm just I'm using the same hunting table. Of course, that doesn't make sense for looting a body. It's like turns out this dead Gretch had three cows on him. Doesn't make sense at all. You obviously would make um, different gathering spots that are suitable for various monsters. You know, if you've got a campaign where there's a lot of fighting goblins, you'd have a, a goblin gathering spot, but it might be, you know, the chances are they're not going to find much at all, but if they do, it's going to be a few coins, an old dagger, you know, maybe a piece of stolen jewellery, a shiny pebble. It's not going to be, I found an ox. <laughs> that, is, that is quite silly. Okay, going off track a little bit. So I've remove that requirement for a spear so now when Sorryman tries it again just go back to my chat he's going to do a shift g uh, and because i'm using the same gathering spot it's asking for a survival check you might want to use you know perception investigation or something else but mine's doing survival i've failed you know, nice one Sorryman. Uh, shift g again let's do it with advantage and because i've got that mini game up it's still going to work now for looting monsters, I would not be using a mini game for that, you know, because um, it's like, oh right, you get to pick, you know. I'd be saying, no, that's what it, that's what it was. You found two silver pieces, lucky you, um, and leave it at that. But of course, so this, you, you can have this on for certain creatures that are lootable and other creatures that are not lootable in this way. So it's not a case of like, oh, oh, every single monster I can now loot from. No, as the DM, you get to set that up. So let's have a look at setting that up. I'm going to just go into this character sheet, and you can see there's a little leaf icon at the top here. Hooray, and it says gatherer. So if I click on this, uh, and I know this is quite small, this has got the harvest sheet that we have here. And what that is, is it's referring to the journal sheet that we're harvesting from. So we're using this, you know, this hunting outside cave. Now it says you can drag it across, um, and it, but it complained that that's not a gatherer sheet. What I found actually worked was opening the to edit this. And then because we're in version 12, of course, we've got the UUID. So just next to the title, we've got that little book, bam whack that and you can paste that in there and then it makes that link. Now what I can do is say right instead of using the five random pools that we've got on the hunting spot I can override that here and say you get one chance. So you search this this body once that's it um, and if you don't find anything you don't find anything simple as that. Okay so let's save that and that means that when Sorryman tries to do this now make sure we've got Sorryman selected uh, shift G to do that I get to make my roll um, I've still got the mini game on and I managed to find what was it I managed to find four ox see very silly example I managed to find four ox if he tries to do that again there are no more resources to gather from this creature which is probably how you'd want it to work now of course I've just mentioned about finding you know goblins and things finding you know gold coins and pebbles and things like that so you can use it in that way more likely you're going to want to use it for salvaging certain spell components and things like that you know giant scorpions you might use it and like yes you managed to salvage you know um some the poison sacks and stuff that you can then use in potion making etc now remember we looked at the master crafting mod so anything we want, you know, if we're going to create a whole recipe book full of types of potions, we're going to need those ingredients. Fine, we can create all those ingredients. Where do they get those ingredients from? Sure, some of them they can buy, but if they're out going, oh, right, you know, I'm, I'm looking out for uh, scorpion venom because that's what I need for crafting a particular type of potion, and you find a whole bunch of scorpions you can guarantee that that player is going to be saying, I'm going to try and extract scorpion venom. You can do it like this. Set up those scorpions with things that they might be able to retrieve from a scorpion. 
And it might be your roll table has one item, which is Scorpion Venom. So it becomes a straight kind of roll to get it or not, but it will power that roll for you in that way. And your players can get into the habit of going, well, I can just shift G on this one um, to see if I can um, actually loot it. Right, let me open this creature again. I'm going to put him back on full health. Okay, so I'm going to heal him. I'm also going to reset that number of pulls. So if Soriman tries to gather from this creature now harvest condition uh, sorry conditions to harvest this token are not met because it's not dead <laughs> so they can't in mid combat just go oh i'm just going to harvest your organs while you're trying to use them in combat and <laughs> walking around it won't let you do that so that obviously is what you would want so once the creature is dead then they can use that to randomly roll on your table which might only have one item or it might have you know zero things on there you might create an item that is just like nothing you know you find nothing on a random roll it will add that item nothing to their character sheet which would be a bit weird um but you could do that i think it's much better just to have a um just to have a a, a higher dc rather than doing it that way but we can see if we look here on his sheet now we've now got three three sheep we've got four ox uh, no pigs pigs didn't come up we've got six goats we've got um two cows we've got 11 chickens so just in this little experimental just playing with this we've pulled up a whole bunch of stuff that's gone straight into his inventory ready for him to use either to sell or to use in master crafting or to give to other people you know whatever it might be so I, I my opinion is i think this is potentially really really useful depending on the type of game you're playing is this particularly useful in curse of strad i would say it's not really that type of game but in something like fandelva where they're spending quite a lot of time traveling between locations they camp out a fair bit yeah i can see that that would be really quite a useful thing to do you can set up uh, fishing spots you know as i said before you know the grasslands farmlands things like that change the type of creatures create all of those roll tables and things like that so last thing we we'll want to do is just to have a look at the settings for this there's very few do you want to enable harvesting so you can just turn that off so from here um uh, you can see there's a quantity path so the data path to item quantity starting from the system excluded well for example in D&D &D, this would be quantity you don't need to change that that's just going to look at the quantity attribute the harvest resource path is it's looking at those hit points to say well what is your hit point value that's where I'm finding it that's the default I don't need to change it and this harvest resource value value check if the harvesting is possible for example uh, for D&D, &D, this would be zero to check if the token has no remaining hit points. So it's checking hit points and it needs to hit zero before you can harvest it. You don't need to touch those. <laughs> I mean, only if you really want to say, well, do you know what? If they're on one hit point, you can. Um, then you, yeah, you could change that if you wanted to. But I can't see why you would. Uh, but it's there. Um, but yeah, very few options. So it's, it's another one of those ripple ones that just bloody works just does what it's supposed to do which is absolutely beautiful um so yeah let me know what you think and it, i know some people are kind of like oh yeah i want to i want to know about harvesting monsters harvesting parts in the last video when we looked at master crafter that was what people were commenting and saying yeah you're harvesting parts that's how you do it so you could just use it for bearing in mind that it's driven by these journals you know i'm going to add a page make it a new one um let's call it goblin loot for whatever reason create that page i'm going to choose my rollable table for that is it going to reset that's kind of irrelevant isn't it how many times can we pull when we're looting a goblin once um what are we going to find well we can leave that blank we're not going to have a, a roll on that does it require any particular stuff to harvest a goblin no it doesn't um, but you might have actually if we're harvesting you know if we're looting if we're looting giant scorpions you might say well actually they need a specific tool for that so for wild plants you might say they've got to have a sickle um, you know whatever it might be tinkerers tools or something like that you could put it all in here 
um, set that up. What is our check going to be for looting goblins? Well, probably insight investigation is probably the right one, isn't it? And you can set that DC as high as you like. If I make that 18, most of the time they ain't going to find anything. Um, if I make it 5, most of the time they will find something. So you can balance it like that nice and easy. Uh, just save that. There we go. That's my goblin loot table and I can gather from it immediately. It really is that easy to set up. Um, I got a chicken from that. <laughs> from I did it as a hunting spot, not from uh, gathering from that person. Uh, so yeah, harvest your organs, your items, your you know it might be you can harvest from automatons. Um, you can hunt in different spots, different locations. Really, really flexible system. And as I said, it's not just D&D specific, so you can use it in anything. So if you're playing future tech, you can use it for, you know, you're trying to strip down machinery to see if you can get usable parts, robotic parts, electronic parts, whatever it might be, um, searching for ammunition. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you could even use it as a general loot of the room kind of, you know, we're in a random dungeon. Um, I'm going to try and loot the room. Brilliant. Okay, well, we can make a roll on that table and in the room you find four candles. You know, you find some old parchment. You find you, you're limited by your imagination. It's really nice and flexible. So, as per the previous video, this module does integrate with uh, Action J's Potion Crafting and Gathering mod that I've not got installed at this at the moment because again I like to show the mods kind of in isolation where I can. Um, in the next video we'll take a look at the Gathering, this mod, and the Master Crafting mod with Action J's Potion Crafting and Gathering installed as well which is we're not going to have to make all of our own roll tables and stuff. It's going to, I think, bring in a lot of that stuff for us. And we can just kind of rock and roll with it. Of course, we can change what we want to. So thank you for listening. Do appreciate it uh, for listening and watching. Um, do appreciate it. Leave a comment. Um, if you're using this already, are you using in you know different ways to what I've suggested? It's always useful to kind of, you know, oh, I didn't think you could use it like that. That would be great. Um, and are you using this in isolation, in combination with Master Crafter? Um, would you use one, not the other? Let us know why, because we learn from each other when it's like, oh, I hadn't thought about using it in that way. Because, um, you know, how, how many subscribers have we got now? We've got like 1,300 subscribers. That 1,300 brains all looking, plus everybody who's not subscribed. Why are you not subscribed? Do it. Um, you know, all of those brains coming up with ideas of how to implement this stuff and how to use it in different types of games don't just use my brain because because that's a bad idea <laughs> anyway thank you for watching i'm rambling again take care everybody and i will see you in the next one